Now on to section 79. This section is given to Jared Carter, who – I'm just going to say it – in from my view, from my study, Jared Carter is one of the shortlist most successful best missionaries in the history of our church who is often overlooked. Now we've, we've had other incredible missionaries that their stories are often told. Jared Carter often gets overlooked. Uh, he gets called on a mission here to go east, and he goes back to his, his uh, birthplace, and along the way, let me tell you a little story about one person of, of many, I, I believe it was over 70 people that, that he was able to teach and help become converted to the gospel on this mission. One of them, his name was John Tanner, a very wealthy man who had a a uh, leg disease, he had uh, invented this wheelchair to help him get around, and he was told that he would never walk again. He heard that Jared Carter, this, this missionary of this church, was in the, the area, and he came to listen to him in order to try to confound him. In the process, he found that he was moved and impressed by the message of, of Jared and his companion. So after the meeting, he invited these missionaries to his home to, to talk more and to learn more about their beliefs, and he said, I confess that I, I believe what you're teaching, but because of my physical condition, I can't be baptized. I, I can't support myself. It, it's physically impossible for me to get baptized. At which point Jared Carter said to him, you believe in the power of the Lord to heal your leg, do you not? And Tanner said he most assuredly did. And then Elder Carter said in a loud voice, placing his hand heavily on the shoulder of, of the sick man, John Tanner, in the name of Jesus Christ I command you to rise and walk. At which point John lifts out of the chair, he hesitated to set his lame foot on the floor, and Jared Carter said, in the name of the Lord, set down your other foot and do not be afraid. Tanner set it down. It was healed, and he walked without difficulty. And he went and praised God for the miracle and, and was baptized. Two years later, he moved to Kirtland, and John Tanner becomes one of the biggest philanthropists of our earliest church members. He he gives – you want to talk about being equal in earthly things, here's a guy who was extremely wealthy who gave it all up to care for the poor and the needy around him and to build up the, the kingdom of God on the earth, and he was brought in through the preaching of, of Jared Carter. Uh, you'll notice verse 3 of section 79, inasmuch as he is faithful, I will crown him again with sheaves. And Jared paid attention during his mission to this revelation. He carried it with him everywhere, and he, he kept a good record of all of those sheaves that the Lord gave him. When he got home to Kirtland, Joseph approached him and said, I have another mission I need you to go on, a specific mission. Now, for fun, let me read a story to you out of a book called History of Joseph Smith by his mother, Lucy Mack Smith. So, do you remember back when God commanded the group of elders in companionships to go from Kirtland down to Independence, Missouri to, to dedicate the land, and they arrive in section 57? And remember that Hiram Smith was told to go up to Detroit and then come down. Lucy, Joseph and Hiram's mother, she thought, hey, this is a great opportunity for me to go and visit my brother's family that live in, in Detroit and in that area, Pontiac, Michigan. So she went with Hiram and those elders on the boat uh, to, to take them to Detroit, and while she was there, here's what she says. She was introduced to a minister named Mr. Ruggles of a church there in, in Detroit. So here's the conversation. And you, 
said Mr. Ruggles, upon shaking hands with me, are the mother of that poor, foolish, silly boy, Joe Smith, who pretended to translate the Book of Mormon. I looked him steadily in the face and replied, I am, sir, the mother of Joseph Smith, but why do you apply to him such epithets as those? Because, said his reverence, that he could imagine he was going to break down all other churches with that simple Mormon book. Did you ever read that book? I inquired. No, it's beneath my notice. But, rejoined I, the scriptures say, prove all things, and now, sir, let me tell you boldly that that book contains the everlasting gospel, and it was written for the salvation of your soul by the gift and power of the Holy Ghost. Pooh, said the minister, nonsense. I'm not afraid of any member of my church being led astray by such stuff. They have too much intelligence. Now, Mr. Ruggles, said I, and I spoke with emphasis. Keep in mind, Lucy's very short. You can picture this, this woman maybe wagging her finger at him, saying, Now, Mr. Ruggles, and I spoke with emphasis, for the Spirit of God was upon me, mark my words, as true as God lives, before three years we will have more than one-third of your church, and, sir, whether you believe it or not, we will take the very deacon, too. This produced a hearty laugh at the expense of the minister. Well, she goes on to say, when I returned, I made known to Joseph the situation of things where I had been. So, he dispatched Brother Jared Carter to that country, and in order that he might not lack influence, he was dressed in a suit of superfine broadcloth. He went immediately into the midst of Mr. Ruggles' church, and in short time brought away seventy of his best members, among whom was the deacon just as I had told the minister. This deacon was Brother Samuel Bent, who now presides over the High Council at the time that she was writing this later on in Nauvoo. It's fascinating because Jared Carter went on all of these missions. He was a special missionary, and Joseph recognized that. And when Joseph's own mother had made a prophecy, Joseph goes to Jared to help fulfill that prophecy, and he did and had great success. Sadly, later on, Jared Carter is going to, after Joseph's death in 1844, Jared Carter's going to leave the church and he's going to join the group led by James String. But then two years after that, he's excommunicated from that group and he gets rebaptized into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. But by then, uh, he's, his health has declined, and he dies – he passes away in DeKalb, Illinois, and doesn't make it uh, back to Utah, which is where he was wanting to go. I love the story of Jared Carter. It gives us hope that as we do the best we can to fulfill these, these missions that God gives us, that you can even have mess-ups along the way, like Jared did, but in the end he's able to, to reconcile and his life is an example of having many, many sheaves piled upon his back from the efforts of his missionary labors and his love.